Well, folks, in today's video, we're going to be having a look at the cheapest HO scale diesel locomotive you can currently buy off of Amazon. So I was browsing Amazon a few days ago, and I stumbled across this locomotive, which is a Walters Trainline CSX engine, and uh, it was going for 82 Canadian dollars with free shipping, which is about 65 American, and uh, to me that didn't seem like too bad a deal, so I decided to order one up. I'm uh, really curious to see what this thing is going to be like. I have had some good experience with Walters Trainline in the past. One of my first locomotives was actually a Walters Trainline uh, via FP40 locomotive, and that thing has been a tank. It's never given me any troubles, so I don't know if I just got a really good one uh, or if they're just well made. I, I can't tell, to be honest, but uh, yeah, I decided to pick one up, and we'll have a look at it. I'm uh, also curious to see how it is because uh, a lot of beginners have uh, reached out uh, asking uh, what's the best engine to buy brand new and uh, I haven't been able to say because a lot of the stuff that I buy is used and uh, a lot of good engines usually go for quite a bit of money so we'll have to see if this is a decent budget engine for beginners. Well I guess there's only one way to find out. Why don't we go unbox this thing and have a look at it for ourselves. Well, there's the locomotive, right off the bat. We got uh, a relatively simple box, really nothing too fancy. But as we all know, uh, boxes don't really matter. It's what's inside them. So let's uh, break this thing out and see what it looks like. Well, there she is. Let's get this thing out of the packaging now. I wanna have a closer look at it. So I quickly just looked over this locomotive and I've got to say my first impressions of it are kind of good. I'm going to try to show this thing at a bunch of different angles so that you can judge for yourselves. But personally, I think that they did a good job with this locomotive. Uh, the first thing I noticed is that uh, they actually are stocking this thing with metal knuckle couplers, which for a budget locomotive actually seems pretty fancy. I was very impressed to see that. I've never seen anything quite like that on a budget locomotive. Uh, you can see detail wise you know that this is not a super expensive locomotive you know you don't have the piece to disconnect the coupler or the linkages to hook up other locomotives which is a detail you know you definitely get on higher engines but that to me seems sort of like a ridiculous expectation to have uh, for an engine which didn't cost a crazy amount of money so i'm just you know gonna let that slide completely as for just general detail you know they've got you know horns on it they've got numbers on the number board uh, the handrails look appropriately sized, you know, they're not uh, overly sized like you see on, you know, many of the older starter set locomotives. Um, the paintwork is all really good, it seems uh, quite crisp, I don't see any overspray anywhere on the locomotive. So yeah, I really don't have any complaints there. It's overall, I think, uh, very decent for the money. There was uh, one thing, however, that I thought was a little bit strange, which is that they included these little cow catchers. And uh, you can see on the back, it would appear that they would, you know, like plug into some holes on the uh, front and back of the locomotive. Uh, but I can't find any, so I really don't know how you connect these on, and they didn't give me any instructions to connect them. So, you know, I guess theoretically, once you figure out how to get these on, you can add them on and add a little bit of detail to the locomotive, which is a nice touch. But it's very weird that it's not clear how to get them on, so take with that what you will. Anyway, why don't we take this thing over the track and test it out, because looks are only important to a certain extent. So, here it is all ready to go. Let's give this thing some power and see exactly how it performs here. Well, it's moving, so that's already a good start. Seems to be uh, fairly quiet. Why don't we try out the reverse? Oh, look at that. It's even got directional lighting. Nice. I don't know if uh, something like this is DCC ready or anything like that, but uh, it is a nice touch that, you know, they bothered to put directional lighting in it. And uh, the headlight seems nice and bright too, so that's all good. Yeah, why don't we uh, test out the uh, low speed now? Giving it very little power right now. It's not moving yet. Cranking it up. So it's not the best I've seen, but you know, for a budget engine, this is really not bad. It's running consistently, which is, you know, ultimately what matters as well. 
Well, I'm satisfied with that. Why don't we hook up some cars and test out the pulling capacity on it now? Now, I don't have any fancy tools to test this thing out, so I went ahead and hooked up a 15 car consist to this thing, which I know in comparison to some of you railroaders out there is not a terribly long train, but it's probably about the most I'll ever be asking of it, so I think if it can handle this relatively well, it should be all right. Let's see if it can bring these cars for one lap around the layout. Well, we got the train moving no problems, so that's good. Let's get it going uh, up to 12 volts here. I think the wheels might be slipping just a touch, but uh, it's getting the train up to speed. Should point out too, the current draw is quite low on it, so uh, it's running very efficiently. Well, seem to pass that little test just fine. I should point out too that some of these cars are kind of heavy, so there's a chance it might be able to haul a little bit more than 15 cars. I kind of think we've about reached its limit, but uh, I'm happy with that. Now, why don't we bring this thing over to my workbench and crack it open, because I'm kind of curious to see what the guts of this locomotive exactly are. So now what I want to do is I just want to crack this engine open and just have a look at the whole drive system, see how they've laid everything out. Uh, one thing I will give them credit for is they actually do give you this uh, small diagram, which uh, shows basically how you're supposed to take the locomotive apart. And uh, I actually have some respect for that because uh, I like it when companies, uh, you know, encourage you to do your own maintenance on these things. So that's kind of nice. So yeah, anyway, we're going to take this thing apart and just uh, see, uh, see what it's all about. On uh, most modern engines, you have to remove the uh, coupler boxes in order to take the shell off, and this thing is no exception. I find this step kind of a pain in the neck, but it does make the engine more realistic, so I guess that's sort of the compromise. And then you've just got four screws, two on each side, but you unscrew to uh, take the shell off. Now I should be able just to lift this all off, and uh, this is kind of interesting. So right off the bat, I can confirm that this is not a DCC ready locomotive. As you can see, there's no 8-pin socket anywhere on the board, so uh, if you want to make this thing DCC, it's going to be a little more complicated than just simply plugging in a decoder. Uh, however, most of the wires seem pretty easy to access, so I don't think it would be terribly complicated to convert this thing into a DCC engine. Uh, one thing I'm not such a big fan of is that uh, this light is glued directly onto the shell. I'm sure this helps the light flow out a little bit uh, better, but uh, I'm not a big fan of this just because uh, it means you know, you've know you got wires connected to the shell and it just makes uh, it a little more difficult to work on. I much prefer it when manufacturers just attach the light directly onto the body like the backlight is. But uh, as for the rest of the body of the locomotive, uh, I've got to say it's kind of nice. Got a die cast uh, chassis right here, which gives the locomotive a little bit of weight. Got a fairly large motor here, which I'd suspect based on the performance is a five pole. You got some adequately sized flywheels right here. They even put a little bit of foam over the motor to help reduce the noise, which is a nice touch. And uh, the trucks are connected uh, very similarly to uh, an Atherton Blue Box in the sense that they're, uh, you know, you've actually got all the stress uh, based on one point and then the whole gearbox uh, above that, uh, which to me seems like a pretty good design. It's uh, definitely proven well in many other makes of locomotives, and uh, it just makes this whole thing kind of robust if this engine was, for example, dropped. It doesn't necessarily mean it won't break, but uh, it seems pretty sturdy, so I like that. Anyway, why don't we uh, open up the trucks, because I kind of want to have a look at what they've uh, done there. So to gain access to inside the truck, I'm just going to uh, get a flatheads under here and just kind of gently pry up, and there goes the cover. And uh, what we can see right off the bat here is we've got uh, a whole bunch of nylon gears, and uh, nylon gears have had a history of cracking, uh, at least on older locomotives, but uh, most of those are pressure fit around a piece of metal. I'm not sure if these ones are. Uh, however, uh, the gears on this engine are pretty thick, so I don't think that that would be a problem, at, at least anytime soon. And uh, nylon is also a uh, very low resistance material, so uh, I suspect this gearbox is quite efficient. Uh, the way the power is picked up is through these wipers right here. It's not my personal favorite uh, system for picking up power. I prefer bearings just because you don't have to worry about things wearing down, and uh, you, know, you don't have to worry about the tension being... Uh, 
correct and everything like that. Um, but it should work fine. And again, I've had uh, a different uh, Walters train line locomotive for nearly 15 years and that hasn't given me any problems. So hopefully it won't with this model too. Time will tell. Well, folks, that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. I certainly enjoyed getting to test out this little locomotive today. And uh, my final impressions of it are that it's kind of a nice little locomotive. There's not anything, you know, particularly special about it. I think if you were somebody looking for something that could haul, you know, 50 plus cars or something that was super realistic, this really would not be the engine for you. But just as a basic budget locomotive, I really don't see anything wrong with it. The detail doesn't seem too bad. The drive system actually seemed kind of good in my opinion. And uh, overall for the price, I, I think it's a, a relatively good deal. So yeah, those are uh, my thoughts on it. I don't know if any of you out there have had different experiences with Walter's train line. If they're good or bad, put them in the comments. I'm curious to hear about them. But uh, yeah, that's just uh, my experience with this one. And uh, time will tell uh, on how well it lasts. So we'll have to see about that. But for now, I'm a happy camper with it. Anyways, with that, I'd like to thank you all so much for watching.